Shalom, shalom. I'm Bonnie Moore. I'm president of Maranatha Ministries. And God has good news for you. We're going to share it together today. We're going to share God's beautiful word, his powerful word, his word that made everything, that sustains everything, that really has an answer for everything. I have found that to be so. God's word has an answer for every situation, every problem, every question that you have. And you may at first be a little doubtful about that, but it is true. And the Bible has many layers, you know. It's like you'll look at uh, something that was written for a certain time. Uh, at the time, it was written for a certain project or whatever. But it will exactly relate to what you're doing and just the word you need at the time. And that's because this word is living and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And it can discern the thoughts and motives of the heart. And it can go between your joints and marrow. It, it heals. It lays bare what's going on inside you and what you need to change. But it also slays your adversary, the devil, and his demons by the word, the sword of the spirit. So it's a most amazing word. And it's even more amazing when you read it in Hebrew and Greek because the original language is so inspired. Because in Hebrew, as you've probably followed if you've been with my show any amount of time, every letter has a pictogram, has a number, has a meaning, and tells you something about the word and what God is saying to you in that word. So it's most amazing that God so carefully crafted the word he gave us and the word he made us out of, yes? We're made in his image by his word. And he made everything by his word, and the angels hearken to his word, and our bodies listen to that word. So it's a word you need. It's essential. And you also need the Holy Spirit. He is essential. Um, Jesus actually told his disciples in the, the book of John that an amazing thing that we should all take note of he said, because I've said these things to you, there's sorrow filled your heart. He told him he's going back to the Father. That he's not going to be physically with them anymore. But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, the one by your side and the one in you, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And so it's a wonderful thing that we have received the Holy Spirit. And as Paul asked the people in Ephesus in chapter 19 of Acts, have you received the Holy Spirit? God went to such great lengths to be able to send him to you. He promised him. If you read the book of Ezekiel chapter 36, he said, I'll take out your stony hearts and put in a new heart and put my spirit in it. In the book of Joel, in the latter days, he'd pour down his spirit on young people, old people, and they prophesy and dream dreams and have visions. And in Isaiah, this is my covenant with you, my words in your mouth and my spirit on you, and my words won't leave your mouth. So we see he, he's always promising them. And then on Pentecost Sunday, the Holy Spirit returned to earth, and now every believer, as Peter said, repent, believe on the Lord Jesus, that your sins are gone, been forgiven, they've been punished on him, you're raised with him. Be water baptized, be baptized, and receive the gift of the person of the Holy Spirit and everything that comes with him. So we see God thinks this essential to us, and I'm going to show you he is. This is a continuation from last week's show, which was called Put Your Thoughts to Work. This is part two. And this is a huge subject and one you need to be thinking about. Because you can do this. Everyone from the least to the greatest, old or young, can put their thoughts to work. It's not costly in the sense that you have to have a lot of money to do it. It's not that you have to travel somewhere to do it. It's like Moses told the people and Paul 
told us in chapter 10 of Romans, the word is near you. It's in your mouth, it's in your heart. The word of faith. We believe, so we speak. It starts in the heart, it's to your mouth. And we want to be there. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 5. And last week, we started looking at ourselves, our inner man, our inner heart, as a business we're running. And your thoughts are your employees. And they're producing the fruit because life and death are in the power of the tongue. And a perfect man is one who can control his tongue, James says in James 3, line 2. And he then can control his whole body. I think we need to look at that. You need to, you need to see this scripture for yourself. Now, you have to realize something, though, and understand this. Uh, he then tells you that, you know, every animal, every beast you can tame, but no one can tame his tongue. But the tongue is like the steering wheel in a car. It's turning the direction your life is going. It's making your inner corporation or branch of the home corporation, the home office's kingdom, fruitful or unfruitful. You're wasting your life, wasting much of your day on idle thoughts that you're not putting to work in the vineyard of the Lord of hosts, or they are producing for you. You need your thoughts uh, to work for you. You need them to, to be employed, to be bringing about a kingdom business. And the kingdom of God is within you, so you need to be about your father's business. As Jesus said, he was about his father's business. Now, I said to go to James chapter 3. It says, For we all stumble in many ways, but if anyone does not stumble in what he says, able to control your tongue, he's a perfect man, able to bridle or control the whole body as well. Now, he says, but no one can tame the tongue. It's a restless evil and a full of deadly poison. That's line eight. He says, it's like a little spark could set a whole forest ablaze. You know, you can spread some rumors or spread some malicious speech and you can divide a whole family. Or he's saying, you know, it's like a steering wheel. It's like the rudder on a ship. It's like the turning it. It's very small, but it turns direction. And some of you know from driving a car, if you're about to hit something, you can make that steering wheel turn pretty fast, yeah? And the car will follow. So if, if we start doing the teaching of the Lord and changing our thoughts and our words to His, our employees, you can turn your business around pretty quickly. How are you running your business? With wisdom, profitable employees, and wise counselor so that you are very productive and full of light and space and peace and joy? Is your inner man somewhere you like to relax and rest? Or is it so full of, are you running your business with folly? The inside you I'm talking about. So that you tear down whatever you start. It seems like you're digging empty cisterns, bags with holes in them. Uh, your money goes in and it's out. You're sick all the time. Uh, family problems, people in jail, addictions, people on drugs, you on drugs. Is that the way your life is going? It comes from your employees, from your thoughts. Call the tree good and the fruit good, or the tree bad and the fruit bad. What's filling your heart is going to come out of your mouth, and that's going to direct your life. Because the tongue directs your life. Is what James is saying here. Now, the Lord shows us that we can be the master of our words through the Holy Spirit. As I said last week, the first thing the Holy Spirit did when he came down at Pentecost to believers was to take over their tongues. The first thing the Lord did with Isaiah when he wanted to send him to speak his word, he took a coal from the altar, that fire, the fire that came down in the Holy Spirit and touched his mouth with it. And he said, first thing I say, I'm a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. You know, you hear a lot of foul language today. You hear a lot of blasphemy against God. You hear a lot of uh, talk about the disasters and the seriousness and the things, and where's God? You've got to get up in God's perspective, see what's happening, and pray through that. You've got to see the devil's activity, and you've got to shut him down. And, you know, the world's, world's going to get worse. Uh, just read the prophecies. 
too many people ensnared by the evil one doing his work, doing his work. We need to be doing God's work. And where is it? It says in Jeremiah, I think 7, 8, that the reason the nation was going so wrong and there was so much bloodshed and so much violence is they were listening to deceptive words which were becoming their thoughts, their employees, and directing their life. You don't let your employees direct you. You're going to direct your thoughts. You take, like Paul said, every thought captive to the obedience of Christ so that it comes in line with the plumb line, the word. Because it's by the word you'll be judged. Not so much by your deeds, but by the word. Did your thoughts, did your actions line up with the word of God? Are you holding bitterness? Are you holding offense? Are you in obscene speech? Just read Ephesians 4 and 5, and he's going to tell you what not to think on and what to think on, you know, to be productive. You want your life working for you, not against you, and it can. You can make yourself, you know, by the Holy Spirit, the Lord build the house in you. The Holy Spirit knock down those walls and put you in a wide and open space. We need to look at those Psalms. Then you're going to have a really pleasant place to reside within yourself. You will be comfortable with yourself. You will lie down at night, it said, and your sweet sleep will be sweet. You will not have all those anxious anxieties and worries and things running after you when you fire those employees <laughs> and you put the right ones in place. And so, um, but we read in James, we have a certain responsibility. It, it's the same as being saved. You get saved by the grace of God. It's not by your works. It's by his works, Jesus. What he did for you on the cross and his keeping of the law that then makes you the righteousness of God in Christ. All your sin imputed to him, all his righteousness is imputed to you. This is a gift as he tells us in Ephesians 2, that you didn't work for. But you have to receive that gift. You have a response ability. You have an ability to respond and to take that, to make your tongue say, Jesus is Lord, and believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you're saved. You had a response. The Holy Spirit, tame your tongue, can come in as your counselor, can bring his production team, the love, joy, pace, can bring you the wisdom. You ask God for wisdom, he'll give it to you. But James says, the one that just said about your tongue, he said that anyone thinks himself to be religious, to be, you know, in the kingdom of God, and yet doesn't bridle his tongue, deceives his own heart. This man's religion is worthless. So what he's saying is, God's given you the power, he's given you the words, because he says back here that you need to be looking in the word, it's looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by, by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer. This man will be blessed in whatever he does. Like my lesson last week about being. When you're in the Word and your thoughts become his thoughts, your dreams become his dreams, suddenly everything you do prospers. Your health, your body, remember? Control the tongue, control the body. And so he's saying, though, that you've got a responsibility. And what is that? He says, be quick to hear, be slow to, to speak, and slow to anger. That's line 19. So the word that has power to save you, what is that? That's your thoughts. Quick to hear, slow to answer. You have to pause. How many arguments have you gotten in that were because you didn't pause. When somebody said to you, you took exception, you took offense immediately and jumped right in and said, well, you do even worse, blah, 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 blah. You did it, blah, 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 blah. And then they're back and it gets worse and worse. The argument heats as you get, as you speak. Calm answer puts down wrath. But it says, pause. Because later on, when you find out what it was all about and you just escalated it, you have to say, oh, forgive me, I didn't really mean that. Well, then if you don't mean it, don't say it. So we've all been guilty of this, but you have to pause. And then you've got to ponder, like Mary did. She treasured the word in her heart, and she pondered on it. And when she spoke, it was good. Do whatever he tells you. You know, you know? And behold, the handmaid of the Lord. So and my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He's done great things for me. You see? So it says uh, ponder, and then pray about it. Pray about it. Pray how God wants to answer. That's running a very productive business. You're consulting the efficiency expert, the Holy Spirit, what to say and what to do. And that's wisdom. So 
you have a re responsibility too. Now, let's take a look at Isaiah 55, where I was going before, and I also want to look at Haggai. And because we're going to see things in the Old Testament that are telling us about this and are showing us Jesus, you know. So he says, oh, uh, this is the beginning of chapter 55. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Yeah, with joy you shall draw water at the springs of Yeshua. I remember Jesus said to the woman at the well in Samaria, um, the Samaritan woman, chapter 4 of John, if you but knew the gift of God, and who's the gift of God? Receive the gift of God, the Holy Spirit. If you but knew the gift of God, you would have asked Jesus for a drink. He baptizes you in the Holy Spirit. He's the one that poured, Acts uh, 233, he got back to the Father and poured the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father, out on us. And uh, in Mark, uh, you know, in Mark and Matthew, he says, uh, John the Baptist, there's one coming after me, and he's, I'm not even worthy to unfasten his sandals, or, you know, but he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. Mm, that coal from the altar that touches your lips, the Holy Spirit and fire, that living water. He said, I give you a drink of living water, become a well in you, just leaping up for eternal life. And he tells us later in John chapter 7 that those rivers of life are the Holy Spirit who was given after he was glorified. He died for us and risen. Those rivers of living water, that living water you need to tap in. And he says, you have no money, come. Buy and eat, come buy wine and milk. His love is better than wine. And the wine became the blood at the Last Supper. And milk, the milk of the word, Peter says, you grow strong on that, you get the right thoughts. And without money, without cost. Why do you spend your money for what's not bread and your wages for what doesn't satisfy? Your thoughts may be totally wasting your time. And you're spending a good amount of the day on them. And they're not going to satisfy you. They're not going to give you, prosper you. They're not going to heal you. They're not going to control your body. They're going to get you into addictions and anger and divorce and divisions. Those are employees you don't want. You want to fire those thoughts. You want to take them, like the tree that's in there, that idol thought, you've got to rip it out or it's going to keep making that same poisonous fruit in your life. You don't want it. So he says, listen, and the Holy Spirit will help you do that. He'll convict you. He'll show you which thoughts are causing your bad mouth, you know? And he'll show you how to get rid of them. His grace is sufficient. He can say, give you a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge. It gets exciting. You'll start prophesying. You know, it's great. Look for those. Seek the gifts. Those are wonderful employees. And they make your life so full. When you get a word for someone, you get a word about yourself. You get an answer to a problem. It's like the other day I was just saying, God, how do I know I hear the Holy Spirit? Which, how do I know what to hear? And he said, listen. I said, Lord, listen. And then he gives me the scripture. I will listen. I will hear Shema, what God has to say, for he speaks peace to his people. And then I remember from Isaiah, he'll You'll go forth in joy, and he leads you with peace. And that peace that passes understanding. And then let peace be the empire of your heart, empire of your heart, to decide in situation of what's going on. He leads you by peace, beside restful waters. If it's causing you confusion and heartache, and it's not from him. If you had a thought condemning you and saying you can never do anything good, and you've ruined your life, you'll never get off drugs, et cetera, et cetera, you know, you never have a good relationship. That's not from him. He's leading you in peace. He'll tell you how to knock down that wall that's dividing you. You know, you need a renovation inside. You need to remodel your space. And in uh, Psalm 30, line 8, it says he takes us out into a wide and open space. Vast. A uh, beautiful corporate headquarters you're going to be. Green. You know, go green. Windows all over. View the view from above, from the top of the mountain where he told Elijah, when he got in such depression and just wanted to lie under the juniper bush or go in a cave, he said, come out on the mountain and hear what I'm going to tell you. Look from the view. You need some more view in you. You need to knock down some of you. You need to get rid of those dark rooms. If the Lord builds a house, mm -hmm. see, unless the Lord builds a house, labor in vain to build it, let him build your house over. Let him reconstruct. Because in Proverbs, we should go there. I, that, that wisdom builds the house, understanding establishes it, and knowledge furnishes the room with a precious treasure, but folly turns it down. What's folly? The fool says in his heart there's no God. And he's got to do everything himself. That's an orphan spirit, and that can cause you anxiety. But we have the spirit of adoption, the spirit of sonship in the Holy Spirit, who witnesses with our spirit, that we're children of God. And children heirs, joint heirs with Christ, and he's given us the kingdom. It's like the elder son, the prodigal son. He's like, 
You never give me anything. The Father said, don't you even know that everything I got is yours? Just ask for it. Just receive it. Everything the Father has, healing, prosperity, it's yours. He's given you the kingdom. Why are you sitting out there idle all day? You know? Start putting your thoughts to work. That's how you take. He knows your thoughts from afar. They're words to him. So, um, and so he says, Isaiah 58, Listen carefully to me and eat what's good and delight yourself in abundance. Ah, the banquet. It's his word. The right thoughts. Whatever's true, whatever's lovely, whatever's of good report, Paul says. Think about these things, not on the other things. That's uh, Philippians 4, 8. And you start, start reading at 6. You need to do that. And incline your ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. Listen that you may live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. He has in Jesus. By the blood of the Lamb, he's made an everlasting covenant. He won't leave us or forsake us. He's there to help you, to be profitable, to produce fruit, to remain in him and his word remain in you. That's your thoughts. So that you will bear much fruit, fruit that will endure. And you will eat the fruit of your lips. And life and death are in the power of your tongue. This is so amazing. You can turn your life around by your thoughts and your words. Don't you want to do it? It's so wonderful. It's so much fun. <laughs> and it turns things around so quickly. And so uh, God's word is sweeter than honey. It's precious. And uh, according to the faithful mercy shown to David, each morning his mercies are new, shown to David. And I just want to show you t a couple of things. We've got to get there. So it says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call to him while he's near. So you better start calling. You need the Holy Spirit. You need a renovation project. And you need him to convict you and show you how to uh, get rid of which employees you need to get rid of. Yeah? The thoughts you need to get. Let the wicked forsake his way. Direct. The ways. Your ways come from your words. And the iniquity, the, the, the man that's vanity is actually the word in Hebrew. In, iniquity or vanity. His thoughts. You can forsake your thoughts. You can fire them. It says it right there. And return to the Lord. Return to his word. And he will have compassion on you. And to your God, he will abundantly pardon. For his thoughts are your thoughts. And his ways not his ways. But you can have them. He says they come down. And then instead of the thorn bush, you know, then, then you go for, out with joy and, and you be led forth with peace. Instead of thorns, those anxiety things, the cypress is going to come up. And the net, where the nettle was, myrtle. Oh, myrtle. Have you ever been in myrtle forest? They smell. They make perfume from it as a memorial to the Lord. Your business will be established as, as a branch of the kingdom, a memorial to the Lord, an everlasting sign that won't be cut off. It will endure forever. Now, I, oh, you got to look at Psalm 101 because this is amazing. And he said, according to David, you know, the mercy is according to David. David understood this. I want you to look at this as your inner man, as your own thoughts, okay? Go to Psalm 101. This is amazing. Okay, so what does it say? Well, it starts as a Psalm of David. I will sing of the hesed and the siddiq. I will sing of the loving kindness, the righteousness, the justice. He justified me, singular justice. To you, O Lord, I'll sing praises. Okay, line up your, all your little thoughts right now and direct them like a choir. Tell them, stop what they're doing and sing praise. Okay, just employ your whole being, sing a song of praise. Now, he says, I will give heed to the blameless way. This is tamin, the way of integrity. Okay, you want to run your business with integrity, right? When will you come to me, he's saying to the Lord. To come, I'll walk within my house. Okay, you're a temple of the living God, you're a house. Uh, Peter and Paul called their body their tent where they resided, in other words, their house. You're housing your spirit, your soul, and all your bodily organs. This is a huge enterprise. What do they say, that your blood vessels would stretch seven times around the world if you singled them out? I don't know who did that, but they may have measured them and measured that, but anyway. You're fearfully, wonderfully made. So you have quite a kingdom there. Now, I will walk within my house in the integrity of my heart. Okay, your heart thinks. That's the thoughts of the heart, and the heart speaks. Remember, Abraham was thinking those words in his heart, and God heard them and noted them in the Bible, Genesis 17, 17. Now, I will set no worthless thing before my eyes. There's your thoughts, those worthless, wasted thoughts. I hate the work of those who fall away. You've got to fire them, those thoughts that are just away from God. It shall not fasten its grip on me. That thought that the devil put in your head of, Bitterness, resentment, offense at what someone said, it's not going to put its grip, fasten its grip on you. You're going to kick that one out. 
a perverse heart shall depart from me. There's those perverse thoughts, those addictions, those um, pornography, whatever. Those need to go. And if you have the righteousness of God in Christ, you can clean them out by the water of the word. It's pretty fast. I will know no evil. Okay, that's thoughts. Don't permit those evil, judging, wicked thoughts. There's no peace for the wicked. Fire them. You can. Replace them with God's thoughts. Whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him I'll destroy. All that slanders, the gossip, the malicious speech, you gotta go. No one who has a haughty look or an arrogant heart will I endure. That's those thoughts inside yourself. Those employees, you want to endure. Pride, it's sneaky. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell in me. They may dwell with me. He who walks in a blameless, a clean way, that's the word is clean, is the one who will minister to me. Joy, peace, patience, the production team of the Holy Spirit, wisdom, understanding. And he who practices deceit won't dwell within my house. Those lying thoughts, deceiving people, if you're lying, put it aside. Lord, hate lies. He, he can guide you to all truth, the Holy Spirit, and convict you when you're exaggerating. You know what I mean. And he who speaks falsehood shall not attain his position before me. There's that employee with that position, and he's speaking falsehood. He's out. Every morning, I'll destroy all the wicked in the house. Okay, well, each morning you wake up, those thoughts that come to you about grumbling, complaining, the people you live with, this and this and this during the day, your boss, your chorus. He says he's going to destroy them with the sword of the Spirit. The thoughts, those thoughts, he's going to think good thoughts. Those are treasures. I'm glad to have those people. I can serve. I can practice patience, you know, and, and pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for your boss. Pray for your business. Pray for your coworkers. Pray for your fellow students. Pray for them. That God will do a deep work. That he'll heal them. That he'll reveal to them the great destiny he has for their lives. And that they'll change their hearts towards you and open doors of favor. I've done that. And I had seen a complete turnaround. And people that were against me became so open to me. Just by casting it on God. I couldn't do it with arguing. And so as to cut off from the city of the Lord, all those who do iniquity, to take out of you all those thoughts. The blood of the Lamb can do it, and the word of his testimony. It's sharper than a two-edged sword, goes between joint and marrow, and the thoughts and motives of the heart. Let his thoughts be your thoughts. Just sing, dream your dreams in me, Lord. Share your thoughts with me. Sing your songs in my heart. Let me bring them to be. I have to go now. I have so much more I want to tell you. But have a great week. Bye, everyone. Let the Holy Spirit tell you the rest. Bye. I wake the dawn with my song, with my song. I wake the dawn with my song. And the darkness, it must flee, for the Lord God is with me. I wake the dawn with my song. Sometimes in the darkness, I fail to see his light. But it's then I shall sing, sing unto my king, for with him comes the light.